Hey guys, I'm getting ready for our second episode here and uh, first thing I want to do is clean up a little bit the mess that I have around because it's all dirty and uh, it needs a little bit of cleaning pretty much everywhere. So let's, let's put our wheel guard in place. I need to make a stand for the display. It's always in the way. There is no, no matter where you put it, it's always in the way. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. All right, guys, so this is the setup that you were looking at a few minutes ago from the previous shot. I'm gonna try to turn this dial test indicator so you can see the numbers in here. Let me explain to you what we're gonna be doing here. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be indicating between two flutes. This is a four flute end mill and the helix angle allows me to do that. This is not always possible, but when possible, this is what I find to be the easiest way to identify our helix angle. So you will see in a second, it's easier done than said, but you will see in a second what I mean by using this method for identifying our, our helix angle, okay? So right now, I'm gonna find the peak on the, this first flute, the one that we have here on the tip, right? So let's try to find the maximum here. It's uh, pretty much zero. Let's let's try to put it to zero, but it doesn't really matter. It needs to be on the maximum. Um, so there we go, right? So this this is where I find my maximum. Okay, that's where I see my maximum. So on the DRO now that you can see from here, there's a lot of reflection here, but here's what I'm gonna be doing. So we're reading zero there. I'm gonna zero my y-axis right now. Okay, so let's press zero here. I'm gonna travel now to the next flute. Okay, so we're gonna go and find the peak on the next flute. This end mill is probably already reground and you can see that it's a little bit bigger in diameter compared to what we had on the other, on the front of the end mill. So I would say that this is our maximum, okay? So now this is gonna give us a number, right? What is this number? We have 26.105 millimeters. So what we know with this number is that the end mill, the end mill flutes, they perform 90 degrees of rotation in 26.1 millimeters of travel. And that's all we need to know to set up our ratio. So let's do that right now. And I will show you how the axis follower will keep track of our helix very well. So 26.1, we can add one zero to make it more precise. So we're gonna tell in our display, we're doing 90 degrees now. So I'm gonna say 900 because why I wanna add one zero to increase the accuracy. So it's gonna be 900, 900 tenths of degree, right? For 26.1, which is gonna be 261 millimeters of travel. So I'm gonna put in here 261. Okay, just to reiterate here, we're saying 90 degrees of rotation translates to 26.1 millimeters of distance, okay? So now if everything is done right, when we enable the synchro mode in our display and we enable the motor, we should be able to follow this fluids perfectly on the end mill. So let me get off and enable the motor. Let's turn it on, okay? So now we are enabled with the motor. Synchro is not enabled yet. I'm gonna find the peak here. That's our peak. At this point, I'm gonna enable our axis follower. And now when I move, 
we should see, of course, the flutes are not uh, perfectly parallel to the plane. Um, that could be misalignment on the head or probably wear on the end mill, who knows what. But I, what, what I want to show you is that with these settings that we were able to identify and find out and pick up very easily, we're now following our flutes without any problems. And that is exactly what we want, because now we're going to be grinding those flutes. Okay, so let's do a double check now. So we have a tip here which says we are at zero. Let me get out, go to the next index, and see where we are with this. So let's, let's read that I'm at 2.2 uh, millimeters right here. Let's read the same position in uh, another flute, 2.2 millimeters. 0, 2.2 right there. We are reading 0 there. That's perfect. Let's go to the next flute. And let's go again to 2.2. 2.2 is pretty much there. We are 0, spot on. Let's go to the next flute and see how that looks like. And let's go again to 2.2. Okay, this is also, I think it's pretty close to 0. I think this is good enough for us to start. The axis of our spindle where the grinding wheel is mounted is at the same height as the axis of our end mill. So they are on the same plane, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to find the contact point of my end mill. I'll try to get cross to be perfectly horizontal so I can do adjustments with the offset setting here. Let's try 10 degrees more. So we're getting pretty close. So I'm gonna give it about five degrees. So that's gonna be pretty much our relief. Because the first point that contacts the wheel is going to define our relief angle. Okay, so that's all, that's all we need to do. And I think right now it's looking pretty good. At this point, there is nothing else to do other than grinding it. Okay, so let's uh, start recording here. Recording on both devices, both in my phone as well as my uh, action cam. Let's get our vacuum going so we can suck some of this stuff. touching. Give it a couple of thousands. It's running only at the front. A couple more thousands. Okay, let's grind all the flutes now. to zero. We barely touched off. I'm gonna give it a couple more thousands here. See if we can clean up this end mill a little bit better. Still not touching completely at the back, but the front of the flutes is fully done. They look beautiful. I think I'm gonna leave them as they are. Yeah, I think they look great.
Let me turn off. This is the end mill that we just reground. Let me get it mounted. Let me get it mounted on the machine and we will see how this works. Three quarters, three quarters, right there. Okay. about 1400 RPM. Might be a little bit fast. Let me slow it down a little bit. You can hear all the floats cutting, which is good. It means that we don't have a terrible amount of run out. The surface finish looks very good too. Let me try to go with a slow feed and a finishing pass. I think I made a mistake when I did not sharpen up to the end, to the very end of the end mill. Because I didn't want to be too aggressive. When I'm conventional cutting, I see a little bit of uh, chatter and dirt coming out. But when I do climb cutting, it's actually working extremely well. Let me raise it a little bit so perhaps we can use the, the very tip of the end mill which is the part to sharpen, give it another 10 thousandths. Depth of cut, put some juice on the end mill as well as on the aluminum piece. This is already looking excellent though, so there we go. Yeah, this is working very well. You can see all the chips flying, look at these beautiful chips. <laughs> 